exclusive contracted novel by Felu Novel Network. King of Tang Dynasty shoulder to shoulder of Li Changqing, a young man from later generations, traveled through the Tang Dynasty and became the adopted son of Li Yuan. Li Yuan ascended the throne and conferred the title of Taiyan's general on Li Changqing. Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Qi King Li Yuanji launched the Xuanwu Gate Rebellion to ambush and kill Li Changqing, but were beheaded instead. With a force of 200,000 Turkic soldiers at the foot of the city, Li Shimin signed the shameful alliance of the Wei River. Li Changqing led an army of 80,000 white-robed soldiers to the capital, Qin Wan, and fought 3,000 miles to defeat the Turkic army. From then on, the south of the desert belonged to the Tang dynasty, and the Turks dared not go south and graze their horses. Li Changqin was renowned for his outstanding achievements and was awarded the title of king alongside Li Shimin, sharing the world with him. Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. One General Tyans you are listening at NovelFull.audio. At the end of the Sui dynasty, the world rose together with great powers. In 617 AD, Tang Duke Li Yuan rose up in Jinyang and, with the assistance of his eldest son Li Jiancheng, second son Li Shimin, and adopted son Li Changqing, swept through various feudal lords and swept across the world. In 618 AD, Chang'an, Taiji Palace. Li Yuan, dressed in a yellow robe, sat upright on the throne, facing the civil and military officials on stage, and loudly said. Yang Guang was cruel, believed in slander, killed loyal and virtuous people, and engaged in military warfare, causing public resentment to boil. In the thirteenth year of the great cause, I led an army of thirty thousand and issued a proclamation to conquer the tyrant. After taking the oath of allegiance, I, along with my eldest son Jiancheng, second son Shimin, and adopted son Changqing, marched south, breaking through Hui and crossing the Yellow River, advancing all the way to the southwest. In April, attack Chang'an. Today, Emperor Gong of Sui abdicated to me, but I have repeatedly declined. I am concerned about the disaster of the people's war and chaos, and I will follow Chang'an as the emperor. The country is named Tang and the capital is Chang'an. After ascending the throne, I will follow the path of benevolence and filial piety, governing the country with propriety and filial piety. After speaking, the courtiers congratulated and said, Your Majesty, Your Majesty. Li Yuan's eyes scanned the civil and military officials below, and finally stopped at the young people standing at the front, saying, The overthrow of the Sui dynasty was not solely due to me, but rather a matter of merit and reward. My eldest son was built, attacking Shiha, conquering Hui, defeating Chu Tudong, suppressing Jihu, suppressing Lu Haida, and pacifying Shandong. Since the uprising, he has made great contributions to me. I am now crowned as the crown prince. Thank you, father. Under the stage, Li Jianqing's face was filled with ecstasy and he respectfully stepped forward to salute Li Yuan. Li Shimin, standing opposite him, had a gloomy look in his eyes and a slightly unpleasant expression on his face. Li Yuan continued to bestow rewards, saying, the second son of the Shimin, who fought against Xue Ju, defeated Lu Wuzhou, and Song Jin Gang, and supported me in capturing Chang'an, has made invaluable contributions. He is now crowned as the King of Qin and appointed as the Minister of Personnel. The ancient people had a great emphasis on enfeoffment of kings. The status of a one-character king was noble, far from being comparable to that of a two-character king, and they were accustomed to using the names of the spring, autumn period and warring states period as their royal titles. Li Yuan conferred the title of King of Qin on Li Shimin, which means that all kings of the Tang dynasty respected Li Shimin. More importantly, he also received the position of Shangshu Ling. Shangshu Ling is the governor of Shangshu province and holds the position of prime minister. Thank you, father. Li Shimin stepped out and bowed with an arched hand. He was granted the title of prince and received the imperial decree, but there was no sign of joy on his face. No one else, just because Li Jiancheng was appointed as the crown prince. 
For Sun Yuan Ji, from the four directions of Pingxi, was promoted to the title of King of Qi. Compared to Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin, Li Yuanji's achievements appear very bleak. He couldn't help but be overjoyed to be granted the title of King of Qi. I bow and thank my father. After Li Yuanji was in theft, all the civil and military officials in the court, including Li Shimin and Li Jiancheng, turned their eyes to a young man standing at the head of the military officials. The young man is eight feet tall, with a majestic appearance and a dignified demeanor. He exudes a murderous aura, wearing a white armor that exudes even more majestic aura. This young man is Li Yuan's adopted son, Li Changqing. Li Yuan looked at Li Changqing with a smile on his face and said, My adopted son Changqing has the courage to dominate. He defeated Yang Su, destroyed Wagong, and fought in the Battle of Tiger Prison. He led Dou Jianda and surrendered Wang Shichong to capture Chang'an City for me, and his contribution was unparalleled among the three armies. The throne and inherent official positions are no longer sufficient to showcase the glory of eternal youth. In the current situation where there is no way to bestow this title, I have decided to appoint the position of General of the Heavenly Strategy. I hereby appoint Changqing as the General of Tyans and lead the Tyans Mansion. General Tyans, ranking above the Prince and the Three Princes, second only to me in the Crown Prince. Tyans Mansion, ranking first among the military officials' mansions, surpasses the Fourteen Guards' mansion and allows for the establishment of official positions. After Li Changqing's coronation, the entire civil and military scene was in an uproar. General Tyans, ranking above the prince and three princes. Tyans Prefecture has the right to recruit its own talents as officials in the Tyans Prefecture. If Li Yuan is rewarded, it means that Li Changqing will leap to become the third ranking figure in the Tang Empire. The grandeur of his position is incomparable to even Li Shimin. The civil and military officials in the court were filled with fear and disbelief. If Li Changqing were Li Yuan's biological son, even if he skipped Li Jiancheng and was appointed as the crown prince, everyone would not feel surprised. Because Li Changqing's contribution is too great, it can be said that almost half of the world was fought by Li Changqing. But after all, he was only the adopted son of Li Yuan, and it was beyond everyone's expectations that he received such an honor. Li Jiancheng, Li Yuanji, and Li Shimin also had a big change in their faces, their eyes flickering as they looked at Li Changqing. They never expected that Li Yuan would give Li Changqing such a heavy title. Li Changqing walked out of the ranks of military officials and bowed to Li Yuan, saying, Thank you, father. Li Yuan looked at Li Changqing with extremely satisfied eyes and said, To borrow a sentence from Chao Chao, Emperor Wu of the Eastern Han Dynasty, when giving birth, one should be like Li Changqing. My son, although you are not my own, I still consider you as my own flesh and blood. After the end of Li Changqing's coronation, the discussion of merit and reward continued, with sacred edicts spewing out from Li Yuan's mouth. Appoint Li Daozong as the left Guanglu Grand Tutor. Feng Pei Ji as the left servant of the Shangshu. Feng Chai Xiao as the general of Lefty Wei. Appoint Tang Jian as the Minister of Internal History. Appoint the Samurai as the Kubu Langzhong. One hour later, the first morning court of the Tang Empire came to an end. Leaving the Tai Chi Palace, Li Changqing felt like everything was suddenly like a dream. He was originally a young man from the 21st century, who traveled back to the end of the Sui dynasty and became a baby. He was adopted by Li Yuan's wife, Dou Shi. Li Yuan and his wife raised him as their biological son from a young age and nurtured him with great care. Li Changqing has shown extraordinary bravery since childhood. Li Yuanba, who is his age, never defeated him before his death. Last year, at the age of 16, he rose up in rebellion with Li Yuan. He alone led an army of 10,000 people, sweeping through major feudal lords and helping Li Yuan conquer this vast territory. The high credit lies far above Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin. Behind Li Changqing, Prince Qi Li Yuanji and Crown Prince Li Jiancheng looked at his back with a gloomy expression on their faces. Li Yuanji said discontentedly, Big brother, 
my second brother has been granted the title of prince and even the title of Shang Shu Ling. Why is it that even Li Chang Qing, the adopted son, has been granted the title of Tian's general and has the right to establish his own official positions? This is equivalent to the crown prince. What exactly does Father Emperor think? Upon hearing Li Yuanji's complaint, Li Jianqing immediately scolded him, shut up. Your father's will is not something you can talk about recklessly. Although he scolded Li Yuanji like this on his lips, there were ten thousand dissatisfaction in his heart. Shangshu province is the highest administrative institution in the country. And Shangshu Ling is the governor of Shangshu province, in charge of national administrative affairs, and holds the position of prime minister. Li Shimin was granted the title of prince and also served as the Shangshu Ling, which already made Li Jianqing unhappy. As a result, Li Changqing's coronation directly brought his displeasure to the extreme. General Tians, who leads the Tians prefecture, has the right to establish his own official affiliation. What is the difference between this and the crown prince? What is the difference between this and the eastern palace? Tu Fu Sha Li Changqing you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Seven days later, Dong Gong. Li Yuanji Ji said anxiously, Big brother. Make a decision quickly. If you hesitate, Li Changqing really can't control it. On the main seat, Li Jianqing slowly drank tea, his eyes constantly flickering. In just a few days, the Tian's prefecture has recruited dozens of talented individuals. Big brother. All the Li Jing and Du Ruhue Yu value have entered the Tian's prefecture. Li Changqing's 80,000 white robed army is unparalleled in the world. In addition, he is now aggressively recruiting talents and his influence is growing stronger. Big brother, can you really sit firmly in the position of crown prince? He doesn't have the heart to compete for the throne now, but people's hearts will change. Even our second brother Li Shimin, who is with our mother's compatriots, now sees us as enemies, let alone the adopted son Li Changqing. Eighty thousand white-robed soldiers are stationed outside Chang'an city, guarding the safety of Chang'an. Once he has the intention to force the palace to rebel, who can stop him? Big brother. When interrupted, one must suffer chaos. If we don't make a decision, it will be too late. Li Yuanji's tone became increasingly excited, and the last two sentences were almost roaring out. Click and wipe. Li Jianqing crushed the teacup in his hand, his face gloomy and almost dripping with water, which was very unsightly. He stared intently towards the direction of the Tian's mansion to the east, without saying a word. After a long time, a hint of determination flashed in my eyes, and I slowly uttered a few words. My sixth younger brother is Evergreen, surpassing all three armies and possessing the courage of a hegemon. He has made great contributions to the victory of his father's army. But people are fickle, and his mistake lies in having the ability to force the palace to rebel. If Li Changqing is not removed for a day, my position as crown prince will be unstable as he spoke, he heard a loud bang as Li Jianqing suddenly sat up from his chair, his eyes filled with murderous intent. Someone quickly announced that Wei Zheng and Shui Wanche will come to the Eastern Palace for discussion. Tian's Mansion, a martial arts arena. Li Changqing monopolized Qing Yao Jin, Wei Qi Gong, and Qin Xiong, dancing with a square drawn halberd like a tiger and tiger. His attack was fierce, and he even managed to gain the upper hand with one enemy in three enemies, causing unbearable suffering for Qing Yao Jin and his three companions. Before he could hold on for a quarter of an hour, Cheng Yao Jin flashed out of the battlefield, shook his sore arm, and said. Stop fighting, stop fighting. The general is invincible, we are not opponents at all. Fighting is too boring. Cheng Yao Jin jumped out of the battlefield, and everyone stopped. Qin Xiong laughed and said, people all say that generals and horses are the best in the world, but they don't know that generals and infantry are more brave. When your majesty rebelled, the generals and Princess Pingyang sold their properties and provided relief to the disaster victims. They quickly mobilized a large army of over 30,000 people, defeated the Sui army multiple times, 
and occupied a large area of Guangzhou. One of the battles involved facing the top general of the Sui army, Yuan Chengdu. Jijian Jingda, you too did not follow the general at first, but I witnessed it with my own eyes. General San Ji killed Yuan Chengdu, and the soldiers under the command were as imposing as a rainbow, defeating the 50,000 Yuan army in one fell swoop, laying an indelible credit for His Majesty's advance into Chang'an when Qin Xiong talked about the past. Cheng Yaojin's face showed a look of longing and sighed, what a magnificent sight it would be to kill Yuan Chengdu with three halberds. Unfortunately, I couldn't witness it with my own eyes. It's a great regret in life. Yu Qi Gong's face was also filled with sighs, and his heart was filled with infinite longing. Just as everyone was recounting Li Changqing's past glory, Li Jing hurriedly rushed to the martial arts arena. General, the crown prince has proposed to his majesty to marry Princess Pinyang to Chai Shao. Upon hearing this, Qin Xiong, Qing Yao Jin, and Wei Qi Gong's faces changed drastically, and they all turned their heads to look at Li Changqing. Li Changqing's face was as calm as water, and he said, Prepare your horse, I want to enter the palace. Li Jing quickly said, General. The relationship between Tian's mansion and the eastern palace is already tense. Halfway through his words, he was interrupted by Li Changqing's wave. I don't care about how he usually targets and excludes me. But he knows my feelings for Xioning, but he advises his father to marry Xioning to Chai Xiao. I can't bear this. After speaking, he turned around and crossed the chasing horse led by Captain Qi Gong, heading straight for the palace. The imperial palace of the Tang dynasty consists of three parts. The Taiji Palace in the middle, with the East Palace and the Yeting Palace on both sides. Among them, Tai Chi Palace is the political center. The Eastern Palace is the residence of the Crown Prince, while the Yeting Palace is the residence of palace maids and the labor place for the families of criminal bureaucrats and women. Xuanmu Gate is the north gate of the Imperial Palace. The Imperial Palace has palace gates in four directions. Southeast, Northwest, and North. The main gate is the Qingtian Gate in the center of the southern wall, which was the place where the emperor held the grand ceremony of the outer court. To the east is the Tongshuan Gate, leading to the eastern palace. To the west are Jiao Gate and Tongming Gate, leading to Yeting Palace. And the north gate is Xuanwu Gate. Xuanwu Gate is located on the Yupa of Longshuyuan, which is the highest point in the imperial palace. Standing on the Xuanwu Gate, one can overlook the entire city of Chang'an. Military status is of great importance. During the Nanshang dynasty period, when the emperor summoned his subjects to enter the palace, they all passed through the Xuanwu Gate. At this moment, there is a solemn aura on the Xuanwu Gate. The imperial city of the Tang dynasty is guarded by two armies stationed to ensure its safety. To the south of the palace, there is a southern Yaman army composed of sixteen guards. To the north of the palace is the Yulin Guard, also known as the Northern Palace Guard, which is directly under the control of the emperor. Xuanwu Gate, as a city gate with extremely important military status, is jointly guarded by the southern and northern Yaman armies. And the generals of Xuanwu Gate were the generals Jing Junhong and LV Xiang of these two armies, as well as the resident gatekeeper General Chang He. The three of them are not subordinate to each other but interfere with each other, thus avoiding any malicious intentions that may threaten the safety of Xuanwu Gate. Li Jianqing used all means to intimidate and lure the three without disturbing anyone, and without authorization, transferred the Changlin soldiers from the Crown Prince's East Palace to Xuanwu Gate to ambush Li Changqing. On the walls of Xuanwu Gate, Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji stared solemnly at the main road ahead. Fourth brother, the border is tight, and the Turks are watching closely outside. If you don't ask your father to send him to stationed in Yuzhou to defend against the Turks' troubles. Li Jiancheng couldn't help but feel timid and he remembered Li Changqing's domineering and majestic posture in the three armies. Li Yuanji saw his timidity and quickly said in a deep voice, Big brother, when you bow, there is no turning back arrow. From childhood to adulthood, Father Emperor has always favored Li Changqing. 
Nowadays, nearly half of the generals in the court obey his commands. Moreover, his prestige in the military cannot even compare to that of his father. After a hundred years of emperor's reign, if he has any ulterior motives, there is no possibility for you to firmly establish yourself in the country. Moreover, second brother is also eyeing the crown prince's position from the side. Even though Li Changqing has no grudges, his relationship with his second brother is better. Once he helps his second brother, the situation will collapse again. For the current plan, the only way is to ambush Li Changqing and, before his second brother reacts, take control of the imperial city with lightning speed and force his father to abdicate. Only then can the situation be in our hands. Li Jiancheng took a few deep breaths, his eyes shining brightly. Li Changqing, you forced me. Three blood stained Xuan Wu Gate. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Three blood stained Xuan Wu Gate The scorching sun of midsummer scorches the earth. Today's sun seems unusually hot. The three guards of Xuan Wu Gate, facing the hot sunshine, mustered up 120 spirits and stared at the Vermilion Bird Avenue ahead without blinking their eyes. Participating in the prince's assassination of General Tyans is a path of no return. Once set foot on it, either one will soar to become a minister from the dragon, or the end will be tragic and turn into powder. Their hearts were beating fiercely with a thump. It's not just excitement or fear. General Wang, do not prison yourself, thousands of troops and horses avoid the white robe. The name of General Li Changqing in the white robe was killed in the chaotic world of iron and blood. Tang Dynasty soldiers, no one knows, no one knows. Da da da, suddenly, the rapid sound of horse hooves broke the tranquility of Xuan Wu Gate. The crown prince, the king of Qi, and the three guards immediately tightened their bodies and looked down at the city wall in unison. Li Changqing was dressed in white armor, with a red cloak behind him, riding a divine and handsome wind chasing horse, rushing all the way into Xuan Wu Gate with lightning speed. He has a noble status and is a general of the heavenly strategy. His status is still above that of the Qin King Li Shimin, second only to the Crown Prince and the Crown Prince. On weekdays, entering and exiting the palace is also unobstructed. On the city wall, Li Jiancheng stared at Li Changqing without blinking his eyes. As soon as he entered the Xuanwu Gate, he suddenly drew his sword and unsheathed it, shouting loudly, Shoot the arrow. At the next moment, all the Crown Prince's guards, Lin Bingqi, who were ambushed at Xuanwu Gate, emerged. Xiu Xiu Xiu. The bow is like a thunderbolt and the string is startled. Feather arrows pierce through the sky like locusts, covering it like Li Changqing. The Law of Lamentation. Li Changqing, like his long eyes behind him, restrained his horse and hovered in the moment of a sudden surge of murderous intent. The Fang Tianhua halberd carried with him began to dance, blocking all the densely packed feather arrows outside his body. A round of feather arrows were fired in unison, and Li Changqing and his fighting horse were unharmed. His eyes were like lightning, piercing straight at Li Jiancheng on the city wall. You're going to kill me. His voice had no emotional fluctuations, and the expression on his face remained calm without any signs of anger. Li Jiancheng's eyes dodged and he dared not look at Li Changqing. Sixth brother, it's not that I want to kill you, but that you're about to ride on my head and I have to kill you, he said sternly Li Changqing glanced at the two thousand long forest soldiers surrounding him from all sides, tilted his Fang Tianhua halberd and pointed directly at Li Jiancheng, saying calmly. In the past, I rode alone in formation, blood-stained in a white robe, and killed Li Mi of Wagong Fortress among thousands of soldiers and horses. Do you think these two thousand long forest soldiers can keep me? Li Jiancheng's face changed and a hint of fear flashed in his eyes. At this moment, Li Yuanji, the king of Qi next to him, sneered and said. Li Mi is foolish and wants to capture you alive in order for you to break through the army and behead. The crown prince's two thousand Changlin soldiers are all elite soldiers in the army and can withstand ten enemies. Li Changqing you must die today. 
the Xuanwu Gate's ambush on the Changqing can be said to have been orchestrated by Li Yuanji. He was not liked by Li Yuan since childhood, but Li Changqing, the adopted son, was greatly favored, so he hated Li Changqing from a young age. Over time, this jealousy accumulates. Until Li Yuan ascended the throne and appointed Li Changqing as the Heavenly Strategy General, it completely ignited the seeds of jealousy in Li Yuanji's heart. Let Li Jianqing submit a memorial to Li Yuan, marry Princess Pingyang Li Xioning to Chai Shao, and bring Li Changqing into the palace. Connect the three guards of Xuanwu Gate, dispatch 2,000 Changlin soldiers, and set up an ambush to surround and kill Li Changqing. Then, with lightning speed, he took control of the entire imperial city and forced Li Yuan to abdicate. This is his plan for Li Jianqing. Li Changqing ignored the gradual narrowing of the distance and slowly wrapped around his 2,000 Long Lin soldiers, with sharp eyes fixed on Li Jianqing and Li Yuanji, saying, Changqing is not a foolish person seeking death. If big brother and fourth brother want to kill me, they will be my enemy. From then on, life and death will be determined by fate. After speaking, with legs sandwiched between the horse's belly, the square sky painting halberd, which was over ten feet long, began to wave. He did not choose to flee to the Tai Chi Palace and seek the protection of Li Yuan, but instead rode alone and charged straight towards the two thousand Changlin soldiers. Li Yuan can bless him for a while, but not for a lifetime. As long as Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji have the intention to kill him, it is impossible for them to turn war into jade and silk. Today they can use Li Xioning's incident to lure themselves into the palace, and tomorrow they will have various other means to ambush and kill themselves. Li Changqing believes that Bai Qigong has achieved great success in the first battle. Since Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji have a murderous heart, don't blame him for disregarding brotherhood. The peaceful Xuanwu Gate is filled with silence. The soldiers of Changlin are brave and each one is the most elite soldier. However, Li Changqing was like a battlefield demon god. He holds the Fang Tian painted halberd and kills like cutting grass. Within a radius of one Zhang, blood flowed into a river, and no one could be seen standing. On the walls of Xuanwu Gate, Li Jianqing's face darkened as he watched the falling Changlin soldiers. He shouted in a low voice, Respect Jun Hong, LV Xiang, Chang He. You three, go quickly to reinforce and surround Li Changqing. These three people are the general of the Southern Yaman Army, the general of the Imperial Guard of the Northern Yaman Forbidden Army, and the general of the Imperial Guard stationed at Xuanwu Gate. Although Li Jiancheng is the crown prince, he is not qualified to instruct them. But they were tempted by the big pancake painted by Li Jiancheng and chose to join him in ambushing Li Changqing. The three of them witnessed Li Changqing's bravery, and their eyes sparkled with horror. But at this moment, there is no turning back. At this point, if we choose to back down, Li Jiancheng will be the first to kill them. The three of them looked at each other, picked up their weapons and rushed down the city wall, heading straight towards Li Changqing. Wow! Li Changqing, give me a spear. General Jing Junhong of the Southern Yaman Army led the way, with his spear pointing straight at Li Changqing's back. Li Changqing killed and repelled dozens of Changlin soldiers with one halberd, and turned around with a revolver that hit Jing Junhong's chest. One inch long and one inch strong. His Fang Tian painted halberd measures 1.8 Zhang in length and weighs 800 pounds. Jing Juanhong's spear is less than a foot long, and his attack distance is far inferior to that of Li Changqing. So much so that while others were still sprinting, a large transparent hole was punctured in their chest. Li Changqing casually threw Jing Juanhong's body off the horse's back. General L. V. Xiang of the Northern Palace Guard and General Chang He of the Xuanwu Gate Guard were greatly surprised. Li Changqing's bravery exceeded their imagination. Jing Junhong, whose strength is not much different from theirs, can't even hold on for one round. No one expected that there was no difference between Li Changqing killing a general and killing a soldier. The two were terrified and quickly turned around, afraid to enter the battlefield. 
However, from the moment they climbed down the city wall and stepped onto the battlefield, they were destined to be stained with blood. The chasing wind horse exerted its four hooves and leaped up, instantly catching up with LV Xiang and Chang He. Li Changqing descended from the sky like a god and demon, and Fang Tianhua's cold and sharp blade mercilessly beheaded the two fleeing generals from their horses. The blood-colored cloak fluttered in the wind, and Li Changqing's cold and ruthless eyes stared at the three Zhang Hai city wall. Behind him, with bleeding oars, the surviving Changlin soldiers looked at him with fearful eyes, trembling and afraid to step forward. In front of him, three generals were lying dead on the spot. The moment before, Xuan Wu Gate, which had shouted to kill Zhentian, regained its deathly tranquility. Dida Dida, drops of crimson blood slid down from the blade of Fang Tianhua's halberd. Li Jiancheng looked at Li Changqing in the eyes, his body thumping back three steps, a strong sense of fear, causing his pupils to suddenly shrink. Li Changqing's bravery exceeds his imagination. In a moment of panic, he hurriedly ordered the guards around him. Go and invite father. For the brave of overlord. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Legend has it that Xiang Yu, at the end of the Qin dynasty, had the courage to withstand 10,000 enemies. When he was in battle to kill the enemy, a substantial killing aura enveloped him. The enemy soldiers were frightened to the point of seeing his gaze, and lost their willingness to fight. Now, Li Changqing regards the 2,000 long forest soldiers of the Crown Prince's guards as if they have nothing. Wherever his gaze passed, everyone lowered their heads and trembled with fear. Even if Li Jianqing repeatedly orders, he dare not approach Li Changqing within a radius of three Zhang. Puff. Just as the Changlin soldiers were afraid to attack, King Qi Li Yuanji bent his bow and drew an arrow, shooting the commander of the Changlin soldiers to death with one arrow. He shouted loudly. Those who dare not fight bravely to kill the enemy will die. Those who dare to retreat without fighting will be cut off all over the door. The next moment, the Changlin soldiers, who had lost their fighting courage, hoarsely shouted and looked into Li Changqing's eyes, which were bloodshot. Not fighting is death, there is still a glimmer of hope in battle. They formed an army formation, roaring like beasts, wielding horizontal swords and fighting fiercely against Li Changqing with unwavering determination. Bang! 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 Apart from being killed by Li Changqing just now, there are nearly 1,900 Changlin soldiers with consistent steps, stepping on the ground as if the earth is shaking. As the Crown Prince's guards, they are all the elites among the elite. At this moment, forming an army formation is enough to withstand the charge of thousands of cavalry. Faced with the magnificent military formation in front of him, Li Changqing stood firm and fearless. He pulled the reins and turned the horse's head. Fang Tianhua's halberd moved with the wind and let out a loud shout, unexpectedly charging towards the Changlin soldiers. Bang! The 800-pound Fang Tianhua halberd drew a beautiful arc in the air, and in the blink of a knife light, dozens of Changlin soldiers were killed in an instant. Limbs and arms were severed, and blood and flesh with intestines splattered everywhere. With just one encounter, Li Changqing broke through the formation of the Changlin soldiers. Rushing into the military formation, he pounced like a fierce tiger into a flock of sheep. As Fang Tianhua waved his halberd, soldiers fell to the ground and died one by one. He seems like a tyrant living in the world, and also like a demon god on the battlefield, ruthlessly harvesting life after life. In just a moment, less than half of the 2,000 long forest soldiers were left. A strong bloody smell permeates the entire Xuanwu gate. The remaining 1,000 soldiers, backed by the city wall, looked at Li Changqing with extremely fearful eyes. The man on the horse's back is only 8 feet tall, with a fair face and looks like a white-faced scholar. But he held a Fang Tianhua halberd weighing 800 pounds in his hand. As soon as he made a move, he transformed into the god of death on the battlefield, and no one could stop him from dying with a single halberd. On the city wall, Li Jiancheng was horrified to the extreme. 
It is rumored that Li Changqing rode alone in the battle to overthrow Wagenzai and beheaded Li Mi's head among thousands of soldiers and horses. Everyone who didn't see that scene with their own eyes thought it was a rumor, exaggerated by the soldiers. Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji also believe the same. However, today Li Changqing's divine bravery completely overturned their inherent ideas. He killed each person and horse, causing the Changlin soldiers to retreat step by step and be unable to form an army. On the clean ground, a pool of blood formed by the convergence of fresh blood. The da da, the hooves of the chasing wind horse lightly tread on the ground, and the crisp sound of the hooves appears incredibly loud in the silent Xuanwu gate. With the flying hooves of the horse, there is also the crimson blood. The sunlight shone on Li Changqing, making him look like a white-robed war god. Li Yuanji looked at Li Changqing bathed in blood and sunshine, feeling both fearful and fearful in his heart. He shouted loudly, Take my golden arrow. Immediately present a heavy and sharp golden arrow on both sides. He held his breath, his waist and horse united, his eagle-like gaze fixed on Li Changqing's head, and then bent his bow and drew an arrow. Shu. The golden arrow pierced through the air, like a golden light heading straight towards Li Changqing. Although Li Yuanji is the son of Li Yuan, he is full of courage and is particularly skilled in archery. His arrow carries a tremendous force. If he cannot avoid it, even a fierce tiger will be killed on the spot. Buzz, just as the golden arrow was about to hit the head, Li Changqing grabbed the golden arrow with his left hand upwards and steadily grasped it. Due to the speed being too fast, the tail of the golden arrow kept trembling and making a buzzing sound. Holding the golden arrow, Li Changqing didn't look back and casually swung it. Suddenly, the golden arrow flew towards Li Yuanji at a faster speed than before. Due to the speed being too fast, everyone couldn't see the flight trajectory of the golden arrow clearly. When the golden arrow appeared again in front of everyone, the entire Xuanwu gate was in a state of uproar. Li Yuanji's head seemed to be bombarded by a force of 10,000 Jun, and in an instant, it turned into blood, mud, and shattered bones, exploding open. And the golden arrow, which had not diminished in power, completely penetrated the city wall behind Li Yuanji. The walls around the city suddenly cracked open, with clear cracks like spider webs. Li Yuanji, the fourth son of Li Yuan, the founding emperor of the Tang dynasty, was shot dead by Li Changqing with a headshot. Li Jiancheng, whose face was covered in Li Yuanji's brain and blood, fell to the ground in panic, using both hands and feet, constantly crawling backwards. His gaze towards Li Changqing completely lost its expression, leaving only endless terror. Drive. Li Changqing caught his horse's belly and immediately chased the wind, rushing straight towards the walls of Xuanwu Gate. The Xuanwu Gate city wall is as high as three Zhang. Without a ladder, relying solely on human labor is impossible to climb up. However, as Li Changqing galloped towards him, Li Jiancheng had a terrifying idea in his heart. He could climb the city wall. He shouted in terror, Surely, Wan Che, stop him. The two generals under the Xuanwu Gate were obedient, with a dying expression on their faces. Angry patting his horse's back, both charged towards Li Changqing. At the same time, he drank profusely and said, Do not harm my lord. The reason why Li Jiancheng was able to compete with Li Shimin in turbulent times was due to his four major literary and military officials. Wen Chen was Wei Zheng and Wang Ji. The generals are Feng Li, Feng Shirley, and Xue Wanche, the descendants of the generals. Both of them have excellent martial arts skills and are brave and skilled in battle. Among them, Feng Li was the general of chariots and cavalry for the Eastern Palace Way. Xue Wanche comes from a general's family, and his father is Xue Xixiang, the left imperial general of the Sui dynasty. After Li Jianqing's death, he fled to Nanshan. Li Shimin appreciated his bravery and repeatedly sent envoys to invite him out of the mountain. Later, he repeatedly made great achievements in defeating the Turks, fighting against Tuyuhan, defeating Xue Yintua, and conquering Goguryeo. Li Shimin once highly praised him. 
Today's famous generals are just Li Ji, King Daozong of Jiangxia, and Wan Che. Li Changqin turned his head to look at Feng Li and Xue Wan Che, and said, You know you will die, but you still charge towards me with the determination to die. You two are truly loyal and courageous. I have never had a complete corpse under my command. To show my respect, I will leave you all dead today. The sound fell, and Fang Tian's painted halberd pierced through the rainbow. Feng Li and Xue Wanche, two trusted generals of Li Jiancheng, both died immediately and fell off their horses. They all left a tiny bloodstain on their necks. Five response from all parties. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tian's Prefecture. Half a burning incense stick had passed since Li Changqing left, and Qing Yao Jin, Wei Qi Gong, and Qin Xiong were restless, anxiously walking back and forth in the hall. The white robed army, with Li Changqing as the main commander and Li Xioning as the deputy commander. The two grew up together from a young age and supported each other in turbulent times, with an incredibly deep affection. If it weren't for the fear of spreading incest between siblings, causing global turmoil and affecting the reputation of the royal family, the two would have already pierced through the last layer of window paper together. Li Jianqing, knowing the relationship between Li Changqing and Li Xioning, submitted a petition to Li Yuan and married Li Xioning to Chai Xiao, which was too harsh. Qing Yaojin and other former white-robed generals are most concerned about the escalation of the conflict between Li Changqing and Li Jianqing, which could lead to irreconcilable conflicts. Deng 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 A burst of hurried footsteps came, and a thin figure appeared at the door. The person who came was Li Jing, who was going to the palace to inquire about information. The three of them immediately turned their gaze to the door and asked in unison, Pharmacist, how is the situation in the palace? Li Jing's face was gloomy and he said in a deep voice, Everyone, something big has happened. The crown prince and the king of Qi have set up an ambush at Xuanwu Gate, using 2,000 long forest soldiers to ambush and kill the general. I was outside the door, and I only heard shouting to kill Jintian inside. What? Everyone was shocked, and upon hearing the words, their eyes trembled with pleasure. Qing Yaojin punched and broke a pillar in the hall, glaring angrily and cursing, How dare the crown prince do this? Yu Qi Gong immediately picked up his horse spear and walked quickly towards the outside of Tian's mansion, saying in a muffled voice, General has been ambushed. What are we waiting for here? Hurry up and go rescue. Qing Yaojin also picked up his weapon and walked out shoulder to shoulder with him. Li Jing dodged and stood in front of the two, saying, the Xuanwu gate is heavily guarded. The city gate must be breached by a 30,000 strong army. If you and I go forward, we won't even be able to enter the city gate. How can we rescue the general? Qing Yao Jin exclaimed anxiously, scratching his ears and cheeks. So what do you say? You can't stay in the Tian's mansion, do nothing. Li Jing said, I have a method, maybe I can save the general. Yu Qi Gong quickly grabbed Li Jing's arms and hurriedly asked, What method? Li Jing said with an extremely solemn expression, Outside Chang'an city, there is an 80,000 white robed army stationed to guard the safety of Chang'an. I will quickly go to the military camp and lead an 80,000 strong army to attack Xuanwu Gate. But such behavior is equivalent to plotting rebellion. Your Majesty will investigate and both of us will have our heads down. Qing Yao Jin, Wei Qi Gong, and Qin Xiong hesitated for a second and said in unison, If we can rescue the general, what if we go to death? The sound is resounding, putting life and death aside. Suddenly, Qin Xiong seemed to have thought of something, with a face full of fear. She frowned tightly and asked, Pharmacist, as you just said, the general is trapped in the Xuanwu gate and fighting against the crown prince's guards, Lin Bing. I'm waiting here to move reinforcements outside the city, and it will take at least one incense stick to travel back and forth. For such a long time, General. General. Upon hearing these words, Li Jing, Cheng Yao Jin, and Wei Qi Gong's faces all darkened and their expressions were very unpleasant. Li Jing flipped over and mounted his horse, 
pulled the reins, and said, General, you are unstoppable. I only wish he could hold on until we arrive. Watching Li Jing's departure, Chen Yao Jin and his companions quickly climbed onto their respective mounts and left the city at the fastest speed, rushing towards the white robed army camp. The residence of King Qin. After listening to a soldier's report, Li Shimin suddenly stood up, his sword eyebrows raised, and ordered the waiting general Duan Zhishuan. The crown prince is so bold in killing General Tians. Zhishuan, immediately summon the Xuanjia army and follow me to rush to Xuanwu Gate. Yes. King Qin. Duan Zhishuan took orders and walked down quickly. At this moment, Chang San Wuji, who was kneeling on the right side of Li Shimin, suddenly stood up and reached out to stop Duan Zhishuan. Li Shimin was puzzled and looked at Chang San Wuji in confusion, asking, Auxiliary machine, what do you mean by this? Chang San Wuji chuckled and said, King Qin, our daily conspiracies have just turned around. Li Shimin frowned and said, How do you understand the words auxiliary machinery? Chang San Wuji said calmly, As the saying goes, when the sandpiper and clam compete, the fisherman benefits. Nowadays, the crown prince and the general of the heavenly strategy are in full swing in the court. In terms of identity, the crown prince is the legitimate eldest son and you cannot compete with him. In terms of merit, General Tians defeated Yang Su and destroyed Wagong, achieving remarkable results. You are far inferior to him. The Xuanwu Gate incident is an excellent opportunity for us, as long as it is operated properly, we can never turn around upon hearing this, Li Shimin's pupils suddenly narrowed and he looked at Chang San Wuji with a frightened expression, murmuring. As an auxiliary machine, it means to have me sit and watch my sixth brother die. Chang Sun Wuji stroked his beard with one hand and didn't speak, just nodded lightly. Li Shimin's eyes kept flickering, and finally a hint of determination appeared on his face. He said, I have a question, please help me clarify. King Qin, please speak. If the sixth younger brother dies, the eldest brother's position as the crown prince will inevitably be unstable. So why would he take the risk of ambushing the sixth younger brother? Chang Sun Wuji said, Xuanwu Gate is an important area in the palace, guarded jointly by the southern and northern imperial guards. But now, it is the crown prince's guard, Lin Bing, who is ambushing General Tians at Xuanwu Gate. If the southern and northern imperial armies are secretly controlled by the crown prince, there is no need to dispatch Changlin soldiers from the eastern palace, just let the elite of the two armies ambush and kill. It can be seen that the crown prince did not control the two armies. But the southern Yaman army stationed at Xuanwu Gate, Jing Junhong, and the northern Yaman Forbidden Army, LV Xiang, have already defected to the crown prince. Killing the general of the heavenly strategy is a great sin. How could the crown prince and the king of Qi not know? Knowing it's a serious crime but still committing it indicates that they are fully prepared. Li Shimin quickly asked, What are you preparing for? Chang Sun Wuji took a leisurely sip of tea before slowly spitting out two words. Forcing the palace. Forcing the palace. Li Shimin's body gave a sudden jolt, as if he had been electrocuted. The originally rosy face instantly turned pale. Chang Sun Wuji has already reached this point, how can he still not understand what Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji plan to do? Give Duan Jishuan, who was standing by and sweating profusely, a look, and Chang Sun Wuji continued. First, I would like to inform your majesty that I will marry Princess Pingyang to Chai Shao, Lord General Tians into the palace, and set up an ambush at the Xuanwu Gate, which is the only way to enter the palace. General Tians died, leaving an army of 80,000 white-robed soldiers outside the city leaderless. The crown prince's guards, led by Lin Bing, forced the emperor to meditate at the Tai Chi Palace. At that time, even if you have the Xuanjia army, you will not be able to return to heaven. There is a good strategist by the crown prince's side. I don't know if Wei Zheng or Wang Gui came up with this strategy as he spoke, Duan Zhishuan, who had received a signal from his gaze, wielded a horizontal sword and killed all the servants who were trembling beside him one by one. 
They would die if they listened to such a conversation. Li Shimin didn't seem to have seen Duan Jishuan slaughter his servants, he just opened his eyes wide and looked at Chang San Wuji, trembling in his voice. Auxiliary aircraft, what do you mean? Let's sit on the mountain and watch the tiger fight first. Wait until the crown prince kills his sixth brother, then lead the Xuanjia army to annihilate the Changlin soldiers, and then force the Taiji palace to abdicate, forcing the father emperor. Six father, save me. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Boom boom. The momentum of ten thousand galloping horses is like a landslide. The sound of horse hooves roared incessantly, like thunder rolling in the sky. An army of eighty thousand soldiers spread out, stretching for miles without a visible end. The white-robed army was an iron-blooded army formed by Li Changqing and Li Xioning during the turbulent period of the late Sui dynasty. Under the city of Yangzhou, Yuan was defeated in World War I. The Battle of the Plains completely annihilated Yang Su's 150000 strong army, accelerating the decline of the Sui dynasty. The Battle of Baikishan captured over 100,000 soldiers from the Wagong army, laying the foundation for the Li Tang dynasty. Under the Tiger Prison Pass, the soldiers, fearless of life and death, bravely attacked Dou Jianda and Wang Shichong, making indelible contributions to the advance of Li Yuan's army into the pass. In nearly a hundred battles of various sizes, the white-robed army has never suffered a defeat, killing all the feudal lords with fear and fear. At this moment, the white-robed army stationed outside Chang'an city suddenly broke out. Eighty thousand iron-blooded generals, each with a strong-blooded spirit, advanced straight towards Chang'an city under the leadership of Li Jing. Waves of murderous energy gathered and billowed into the clouds, with a powerful momentum that felt suffocating even if separated by thousands of kilometers. The bustling and bustling city of Chang'an instantly fell silent. The vendors and pedestrians on the road only felt the ground tremble violently, making them stand unsteadily. They all looked at the city gate with a frightened expression on their faces. Li Xiaogong received the news and rushed to the city gate with a flying horse. He rode on his horse and looked at the leaders Li Jing, Yu Qi Gong, and others from afar, shouting loudly, Pharmacist, why are you gathering 80,000 white-robed soldiers approaching Chang'an city? Li Jing also replied loudly, The crown prince and the king of Qi have set up an ambush at Xuanwu Gate, using 2,000 long forest soldiers to ambush General Tians. We are here to enter the palace and save the lord. Upon hearing this, Li Xiaogong's face changed greatly and his face was filled with fear. I was shocked that Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji were so bold, and at the same time, I was also shocked that Li Jing and others dared to directly lead troops into Chang'an to save Li Changqing. Pharmacist, without your majesty's permission, the white-robed army cannot enter the imperial city. Your actions are tantamount to rebellion. On the side of General Tians, I will quickly inform the king of Qin and ask him to go and support him as soon as possible. Leading troops into the imperial city without the emperor's permission is a rebellion and will result in beheading. But Li Jing remained unmoved, drew his sword out of its sheath, pointed straight at the sky, and spoke with a resounding and powerful voice. To save the lives of the defending soldiers, Prince Zhao quickly gave way. Otherwise, my 80,000 army only needs one charge, and all 3,000 soldiers guarding the city will die under the hooves of horses, turning into blood mud. Pharmacist Li Xiaogong wanted to persuade again, but was shot down by an arrow with a golden crown of tied hair on his head, and his long hair suddenly spread out. He looked ahead in terror, only to see Yu Qi Gong's beard fully open, holding a bow and arrow, his eyes wide open in anger, and shouting loudly. Zhao Jun Wang, make way quickly. As Wei Qi Gong's words fell, Cheng Yao Jin, who was even more irritable, became impatient and waved his spear, shouting loudly. All the soldiers followed me into the city to attack Xuanwu Gate and rescue the general. Roar! Suddenly, an army of 80,000 white-robed soldiers roared in unison, charging into Chang'an city with a towering evil energy. 
the soldiers guarding the city turned pale with fear, their bodies trembled, and they couldn't hold the weapons in their hands. The white-robed army is fierce and majestic, known to everyone in the world today. The 80,000 iron-blooded army in front of us is unstoppable by a force of 200,000. They once charged, facilitating Yang Su's 150000 strong army to behead tens of thousands of people. This is an invincible army. In the midst of panic, Li Xiaogong quickly rode his horse to make way. Amidst the roaring hooves and rolling smoke, an army of 80,000 advanced into Chang'an City and entered Xuanwu Avenue. The people on the road are hiding on both sides. Looking at the magnificent white-robed army, one by one, a sense of awe and longing appeared in their eyes. Xuanwu Gate Li Changqin rode a single horse and faced the crown prince's guards, Changlin's soldiers, killing thousands of enemies. He beheaded five generals in the formation and killed Li Yuanji with arrows. Such a heroic posture made everyone present fear like ghosts and gods, one by one filled with fear. The Changlin soldiers are the elite among the elite, and at this moment, their faces are showing signs of death. They are scared out of courage and have no strength to face the battle anymore. On the city wall, Li Jiancheng was in a very miserable state. He trembled with fear and said with a tearful tone, Sixth brother, it's my elder brother who was wrong. My elder brother shouldn't have been obsessed and believed in my fourth brother's slander. Now that my fourth brother is dead, it depends on my brotherly affection. Can you spare my life? Li Changqing's face was devoid of emotional turmoil, and his gaze remained calm as he looked at Li Jianqing. He whispered, Since the moment you lured me into the palace and designed to ambush me, our brotherhood has been broken. I, Li Changqing, act openly and honestly. Whoever sees me as a brother, I see him as a sibling. If you want to kill me, you can't blame me for not showing brotherhood after speaking, a murderous aura erupted in his eyes. He lifted Fang Tian's painted halberd and was about to ride his horse to kill Li Jiancheng. Stop it! A solemn and sorrowful voice sounded from the south. Emperor Li Yuan of the Tang Dynasty finally arrived. After seeing the newcomer, Li Changqing grabbed the reins and flipped over to dismount. I respectfully bowed to Li Yuan and said, I have seen my father before. Li Yuan was dressed in an imperial robe, exuding a magnificent aura. On his left is a majestic general, who is the Prince of Renqing, Li Daozong. Li Daozong, one of the three famous generals of the early Tang dynasty, was on par with Li Ji and Shui Wanche. In later generations, he was granted the title of King of Jiangxia and married Princess Wenqing of Tubo Songsen Gampo, who was his daughter. To the right of Li Yuan is a woman wearing armor. The scorching noon sun shone on the broad slate, and this fully armored female knight stood in the sunlight. Her figure remained still and fixed, yet exuded a majestic aura that made one dare not look directly at her. She has a soft and beautiful appearance, but there is a hint of firmness and determination between her eyebrows and eyes. Her mount was a snow.white steed, with even its hooves snow.white and without any impurities. The horse's expression is focused, just like its owner. Horseshoe occasionally tap on the slate, making rhythmic sounds. This woman is the deputy commander of the white-robed army, Princess Li Xioning of the Tang Empire. At this moment, I saw the body of the Changlin soldiers lying on the ground, looked at the blood-stained Xuanwu Gate, looked at the murderous Li Changqing, who was soaked in blood all over, and looked at the frightened crown prince Li Jiancheng on the city wall. This woman who dared to fight on the battlefield and never dared to be weak showed a hint of fear on her face. After seeing Li Yuan's arrival, Li Jiancheng was overjoyed and knelt down on the ground shouting, Father, save me. 7. When giving birth, one should be like Li Changqing. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The scene was too tragic. The ground formed pools of blood of varying sizes, with limbs and arms scattered all over the ground, and corpses piled up as high as a small mountain. Two thousand Changlin soldiers, with less than half remaining. 
Li Yuanji's headless body looked so shocking the blood had completely dyed Li Changqing's white armor red, as if he were a demon god from the abyss of hell. Even Li Yuan dared not confront his fierce aura. Li Yuan glanced at Li Yuanji's body and his gaze fell on Li Jianqing's body. He trembled and said, What exactly happened that made you two siblings fight each other? At this moment, Li Jianqing's heart was filled with fear, all he wanted was to survive, and he couldn't care about anything else, let alone think of an excuse. He blurted out and said, It's my fourth younger brother. He encouraged me to use Xioning's marriage to lure my sixth younger brother into the palace. He set up an ambush at Xuanwu Gate and killed my sixth younger brother. It was all my fourth younger brother's instigation, and I didn't want to do this. As the words fell, Li Yuan's body shook. If it weren't for Li Xioning's timely support, he would have been unstable and fell to the ground. Based on Li Jianqing's statement, he immediately deduced the reason for the fratricidal relationship. For a moment, my heart was filled with grief. Having conquered the country and taken the throne, one's own sons are killing each other. His tiger eyes were tinged with tears as he looked at Li Changqing and said in a pleading tone, Changqing, after all, the crown prince is your elder brother. Now that UNG has bowed down, just spare the crown prince's life. Li Changqing didn't speak, just silently looked at the man in front of him who had raised him like his own son for more than ten years. All the things from childhood come to mind one by one. Among the many brothers, Li Yuanji and Li Yuanba are the least favored by Li Yuan, while Li Changqing, Li Shimin, and Li Jiancheng are the most favored. Especially Empress Dou, who has passed away, treats Li Changqing better than her biological son. Countless times have made Li Shimin and his team jealous and jealous. The scene was silent and plunged into absolute silence. Everyone dared not breathe, and their gaze fell on this man who was as brave as a demon god. Li Yuan's eyes were filled with a strong feeling of licking the calf. Anyway, Li Jiancheng is still his son. He did not use imperial decree to suppress Li Changqing because Li Jiancheng made a big mistake first and he did not want to be biased. Time passed by minute by second, and Li Jiancheng's forehead was completely soaked with sweat. I don't know if it was from the scorching sun or the cold sweat flowing out of fear. However, even under the scorching sun, he still felt cold all over. Because Li Changqing's qi machine has always been locked onto him. After a long time, when Li Jianqing's nervous heart was about to jump out, Li Changqing finally spoke up. The crown prince has a heart to kill his courtiers, so the courtiers regard him as a hateful bandit who never dies. However, the emperor's kindness in nurturing his children put them in a dilemma. Not killing him makes my son unhappy and his thoughts unclear. Killing him will surely break my father's heart and be unfilial to him. After careful consideration, the courtier decided to throw a halberd at the crown prince, but everything was up to fate. Regardless of life or death, today's grudges will dissipate with the wind, and I should be grateful for my father's kindness. Upon hearing this, Li Jianqing's face immediately turned pale with fear. Screaming in terror, Father. Li Changqing has the courage to dominate. Even fierce generals like Xue Wanche and Feng Shirley cannot stop him. Don't agree to him. Otherwise, my courtiers will have no choice but to die. Li Yuan closed his eyes in pain, hesitating deeply in his heart. After a while, it finally reopened, as if there was a bright light that made people dare not look directly at it. I, agree. Li Changqing's indifferent expression revealed a hint of smile for the first time, and the constantly rising murderous aura in his eyes slowly dissipated. He lifted Fang Tian's painted halberd backwards and turned to face Li Jiancheng. Li Jiancheng was terrified and ran back in a panic, shouting loudly, Raise your shield! Raise your shield. Thirty fully armed guards beside him immediately raised their shields and firmly protected Li Jiancheng inside. In the next moment, a stunning sonic boom was heard, and Fang Tianhua's halberd pierced through the sky, transforming into a silver light that quickly charged towards Li Jiancheng like a shooting star. With a loud bang, 
all thirty armored guards flew out. Their armor cracked and shattered, falling to the ground. Li Jiancheng, who was protected inside, lay motionless on the ground. He turned pale and had no trace of blood. Looking at the sky with empty eyes, there was a look of extreme fear in the pupils. Li Jiancheng did not die. A square sky painting halberd, measuring 1.8 zhang and weighing 800 pounds, brushed against his head, shattered his crown, and inserted it into the city wall behind him. Seeing this scene, Li Yuan breathed a heavy sigh of relief. If Li Changqing kills Li Jiancheng, he really doesn't know what to do. Soon, his face became cold and stern, and he angrily scolded, the crown prince has no tolerance for others, harbors jealousy, and is not worthy of taking charge of the state. Now, Li Jiancheng has been deposed from his position as crown prince, confined to the palace without my will, and cannot go out. King Li Yuanji Ji of Qi was cruel and ruthless, always seeking revenge and encouraging the crown prince to engage in sibling violence. I have passed away now, and I will not be punished. I will order the ancestral home to bury him on the city wall, Li Jiancheng listened to Li Yuan's instructions and his face turned pale, as if he were a walking corpse. Suddenly, Jian burst into laughter. Father, you have abolished me, the legitimate eldest son, for the sake of an adopted son. Your fourth younger brother has died, and you will not hold him accountable. It is better to have an adopted son than to have one. Born into the Li family, how unfortunate it is. From childhood to adulthood, you and your mother have doted on him. So why don't you just make him the crown prince and pass on this land to him as well? Li Yuan's expression was unpredictable, and his face kept changing. With a final wave of his dragon robe, he shouted loudly, Take down the deposed crown prince. The two imperial guards on the left and right immediately stepped forward and escorted Li Jianqing away. Li Changqing bowed to Li Yuan and said, The border is tight, and the Turks are watching closely. I would like to invite you to sit in Yuzhou and defend the Tang dynasty against the Turks' troubles. Yuzhou, also known as Beijing in later times, has an extremely important geographical location. Once Yuzhou is lost, the Turkic army can advance straight into the Central Plains. At that time, the people of the Central Plains will be under the iron hooves of the Turks. What a city mansion and wisdom Li Yuan had, he could see through the profound meaning of Li Changqing's request to take control of Yuzhou at a glance. Resisting the Turks is one aspect, but more importantly, he does not want to be involved in this chaotic royal dispute. Unlike Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin, he does not aspire to the country, but only seeks to protect the environment and the people. When giving birth, be like Li Changqing. My biological sons, Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin, fought openly and secretly for the throne, with no trace of brotherhood. Only Li Changqing still remembers his father emperor in his heart. Even if Li Jiancheng ambushed him, he spared Li Jiancheng's life in the end due to his concern for licking the calf. Otherwise, with his divine bravery, even if Li Jiancheng had ten lives, he would have died under that halberd. Since ascending to the throne, Li Yuan has always felt in his heart during quiet nights, if only Li Changqing were his biological son. If Li Changqing were his biological son, he would not hesitate to abolish the system of legitimate eldest son inheritance and appoint Li Changqing as the crown prince. But Li Tangjiangshan must be inherited by descendants of the Li family's bloodline. Forcefully suppressing the impulse to neutral Li Changqing as the crown prince, Li Yuan said, I allow you to sit in Yuzhou, but not at the Yongzhen border. For at most three years, when you crown your head, you must return to the capital. Eight celebrating each other with bullets and crowns. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The chaos at the end of the Sui dynasty, warlord separatism, and feudal lords vying for supremacy, caused turmoil in the land of Kyushu. The Turks, who inhabit the grasslands, and the Tubo, who reside on the plateau, are all eager to bite off a piece of meat from the Han family's land. Yuzhou is an important border area of the Tang dynasty. Once lost, the Turkic cavalry could drive straight into the central plains, wreaking havoc on the hinterland, with unimaginable consequences. 
Before Li Yuan ascended the throne, he sent Li Jiancheng and Li Ximin to Yuzhou several times to guard against the Turkic invasion. But several encounters with the Turks did not give them the upper hand. Nowadays, the Tang Empire is in its infancy, with all kinds of waste thriving and people's livelihoods declining, requiring rest and recovery. After three years, once you regain your strength, you will not be afraid of any other ethnic group. If Li Changqing were to sit in Yuzhou, it would ensure a worry-free border and provide valuable time for the Tang dynasty to rest and recuperate. With a loud rumble. Suddenly, the ground trembled violently, and thunder seemed to explode in my ears. Immediately afterwards, the crowd heard thunderous roars and shouts of killing coming from outside the Xuanwu gate. When everyone's face changed drastically, heavy and passionate drums rang out. Dong! 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 Outside the city gate, war drums sound and horse hooves soar. Under the command of Li Jing, the elite white-robed army attacked the city and made great contributions to the imperial city. The defenders of Xuanwu Gate, the South Ya Army and the North Ya Forbidden Army, were all transferred by Li Jiancheng, leaving only the Crown Prince's guards, Lin Bing. Now, only half of the 2,000 soldiers from Changlin were killed by Li Changqing, and they were all scared out of their wits, trembling and leaning against the city wall. The unmanned Xuanwu Gate was quickly breached by the white-robed army. At the moment when the city gate fell, three powerful generals rushed in. One of the fierce generals, with a face as black as charcoal, took the lead and shouted loudly, Yu Qi Jingde is here. The crown prince should not harm our lord. Beside Li Yuan, prince of Renqing, Li Daozong, was frightened by the scene before him and turned pale. He stood in front of Li Yuan and shouted, Escort. Rows of forbidden soldiers immediately wielded horizontal swords and spears to protect Li Yuan. The imperial city was breached, and a group of ferocious soldiers rushed into the Xuanwu Gate. Li Yuan seemed to have no fear at all. After attacking the Xuanwu Gate, Yu Qi Gong, Qing Yao Jin, Qin Xiong, and others saw the brutal and bloody scene inside, and their hearts tightened. After seeing Li Changqing standing straight in his blood stained white robe, he breathed a heavy sigh of relief. Qing Yao Jin asked in a loud voice, General. Are you okay? Li Changqing looked at the white-robed army that had already occupied the imperial city, as well as several old subordinates who risked their lives to save him. He was deeply moved in his heart, but his face still showed a majestic expression and shouted. Strongly attack the imperial city and disturb the holy master. Hurry up and retreat. Yu Qi Gong and the three of them were taken aback and then they saw Li Yuan wearing a dragon robe and not far away. Suddenly realizing that Li Changqing had overcome the danger of ambush and killing, they dismounted one by one and saluted Li Yuan. Li Yuan remained expressionless and said, Without my permission, you have led troops into the city, launched a strong attack on Xuanwu Gate, and occupied the imperial city. Are you trying to rebel? Yu Qi Gong and his three companions lowered their heads and spoke calmly, I dare not. Father. Li Changqing took a step forward and bowed, respect them. They must have learned that their vassals were ambushed by the deposed crown prince, so they acted recklessly and led troops to rescue them. Please, for the sake of their savior's eagerness, do not argue with them. Li Xioning, who was by Li Yuan's side, quickly stood up and said, Father, the white-robed army was created by the sixth brother and daughter. Jingde, Jijie, and Xu Bao were also old generals of the Taiyan's prefecture, loyal to the Tang dynasty, and had no intention of rebellion. Ha ha ha! Suddenly, Li Yuan burst into laughter, and everyone thought it was a precursor to his anger, with serious expressions on their faces. But who knew that Li Yuan not only did not get angry, but also looked at Li Changqing with admiration on his face, saying, Since leading the army, you have been living and dying together with the soldiers, leading the way in every major battle and killing the enemy with blood. You treat your soldiers like brothers, and they are willing to die for you. How dare they attack the imperial city and come to save you at the risk of rebellion and beheading? 
how could I blame such loyal and brave soldiers who dare to die to save the Lord at this moment, Li Yuan is very envious of Li Changqing. Since the Jinyang uprising, he has been surrounded by interest groups, calculating and deceiving each other. The pure righteousness of the robe of Li Changqing and his soldiers was something he had never experienced before. With a wave of his dragon robe, Li Yuan turned around and walked towards the Tai Chi Hall, while saying, Order to apprehend the left and right guard generals of the Southern Yaman Army and the commander of the Northern Yaman Forbidden Army, remove their official positions, and conduct strict scrutiny of the heavenly prison. The white-robed army's dragon cavalry guard is temporarily stationed in the imperial city, guarding its safety. Dragon cavalry guards are the elite cavalry of the white-robed army, composed of 5,000 people, each brave and skilled in battle, making them the true masters of tigers and wolves. The southern and northern imperial guards, who were originally guarding the imperial city, were unexpectedly transferred by the deposed crown prince Li Jiancheng. If we don't thoroughly investigate, even Li Yuan living in the palace would be terrified. The white-robed army launched a strong attack on the imperial city to rescue Li Changqing. He would not feel threatened, but would appreciate Li Changqing's leadership skills even more. Because he knew in his heart that Li Changqing had no intention of rebellion. The southern and northern imperial guards who could guard the palace were originally supposed to obey his orders, but they were able to be mobilized by Li Jiancheng, which made him shudder. As soon as Li Yuan issued these two orders, Li Daozong was greatly shocked and quickly said, Your Majesty. The safety of the imperial city is in danger, how can we entrust the responsibility to the dragon cavalry guard? Li Daozong, the nephew of Li Yuantang, has a good relationship with Li Shimin. Now that Li Jiancheng has been deposed, it is almost certain that Li Shimin will be the next crown prince. If the Dragon Cavalry Guard were to be stationed in the Imperial City, it would not be his or Li Shimin's wish. Unexpectedly, as soon as he finished speaking, Li Yuan became furious and said, My word of mouth, how dare you question it. Li Daozong was panicked and quickly lowered his head, I dare not. Li Yuan shook his sleeve and robe, snorted coldly, and said, Jiancheng and Shimin are my most outstanding sons. But all they care about in their hearts is this 95 supreme throne. Only Changqing, the adopted son, has the heart to care about his family, country, and the world, and the people and all the people. Half of the Tang dynasty was conquered by him. If he has a rebellious intention, who can stop the 80,000 white-robed army outside Xuanwu Gate at this time outside the imperial city, Li Shimin ordered the Xuanjia army to retreat with a gloomy expression on his face. The sixth brother is incredibly brave, and even the 2,000 Long Lin soldiers couldn't save his life. Li Jing and others are loyal and brave to protect the Lord, and how dare they risk their lives to attack the imperial city. Auxiliary machines, now the city is full of white-robed soldiers. We missed the perfect opportunity to force the palace, it's a pity. Chang Sun Wuji lightly stroked his long beard and said calmly, Don't worry, King Qin. There's no need to regret it. On the contrary, we should clap our hands and celebrate at this moment. Li Shimin frowned and asked, What is the meaning of this statement about auxiliary machinery? Chang Sun Wuji said, Li Jiancheng has been deposed, and the crown prince's position is vacant. Now, no one has the right to compete for the throne with you, the king of Qin. Compared to killing the crown prince and forcing his majesty to abdicate before, this approach is more gentle and will not be criticized by the world in the future. After all, General Tians, no matter how much he receives your majesty's favor, this Li Tangjiangshan will eventually be passed on to his bloodline descendants for inheritance. Congratulations to King Qin, you have no worries after today. Upon hearing Chang San Wuji's analysis, Li Shimin suddenly became enlightened, and the haze between his eyebrows and eyes gradually dissipated. He burst out laughing twice and said, King Qi has died and the crown prince has been deposed. At this moment, my father must be deeply saddened and saddened. Auntie, follow me into the palace to comfort my father. 9. The Aspiration of Hu Tsubing You are listening at Novel Full.audio
The Xuanwu gate, stained with blood, was quickly cleaned. The stone slab that would blister with just one step, the floor covered with broken limbs and arms, piled up into small mountain-like corpses, all made these palace maids responsible for cleaning the ground pale and trembling with fear. Li Changqing ordered Li Jingsu to bring the white-robed army back to the camp outside Chang'an city, leaving only 5,000 dragon cavalry guards to guard the imperial city. Tai Chi Hall Li Yuan sat on the dragon chair with a dejected expression on his face, sunken eyes, and lifeless eyes, as if he had aged over ten years in an instant. Outside, even if he witnesses several sons fighting each other, he must maintain the dignity of the emperor and not cry and shed tears like an ordinary old man. Even in this deep palace, he cannot fully release his emotions. Your Majesty, the old servant has already learned about what you have instructed. I don't know how long it took, but Wang Qingren, the close eunuch of Li Yuan and the eunuch in chief of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, walked into the Tai Chi Hall. Li Yuan raised his head again, and the sadness on his face disappeared in an instant, leaving only a majestic aura that was too intimidating to face. Wang Qingren bowed and said, The deposed crown prince has sent a message to your majesty to marry Princess Pingyang to the general of the right guard. Shortly after the news spread, General Tians hurriedly rushed to the palace. Upon hearing this, Li Yuan's face kept changing. Sometimes shocked, sometimes frowned, sometimes frightened. Just as Li Yuan was lost in thought, the guard outside the door reported that Qin King Li Shimin was seeking an audience. As soon as Li Shimin entered the Tai Chi Hall, he hurriedly walked up to Li Yuan and said with a worried expression. Big brother designed to ambush and kill his six younger brothers, and my son came to see him. Now that the matter has come to an end, please make sure to mourn and not be overly sad, as it may damage the dragon's body. At this moment, Li Yuan only wants to verify his thoughts and has no mood to talk to Li Shimin about anything else. Directly asked, Shimin, I ask you, is there anything hidden from me between Changqing and Xuning? Li Shimin was taken aback, but soon realized what Li Yuan was asking. After hesitating for a moment, he said with a sorrowful expression, it's not that my courtiers intentionally concealed my father's emperor. It's really a shocking incident that will make people all over the world curse and laugh when it comes out. Even before the rebellion of the father, the sixth younger brother had a secret affair with the third sister. With the establishment of the white-robed army, the two of them joined hands to gallop on the battlefield, and their relationship grew stronger. The humiliation of this family's family has caused concerns among the courtiers and others about the father's anger, so they have not informed the father of it for a long time. Li Yuan's face immediately darkened, and what Li Shimin said just confirmed his guess in his heart. Murmured, no wonder, no wonder I have arranged marriages for Xuning several times, and Changqing has been meddling in it. No wonder with his strategy, he was easily lured into the Xuanwu gate by Jiancheng. In an instant, everything that Li Yuan had previously been unable to understand suddenly became clear. Although he doted on Li Changqing even more than Li Shimin, sibling relationships were not accepted by the world. Whether it was for the sake of Li Changqing and Li Xioning, or for the sake of the dignity of the Li Tang royal family, he would never allow such unethical things to happen. He stood up and shouted loudly, Wang Qingren, hurry to the Huguo mansion to deliver an edict. Ask Chai Xiao and the imperial censor to discuss a good day and auspicious day, and choose a day to marry Princess Pingyang. No. The eunuch Wang Qingren, in charge of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, responded and bowed down from the Tai Chi Hall. The imperial garden is covered in blooming flowers, with butterflies dancing and a fragrant atmosphere. Li Changqing and Li Xioning walked side by side along the path of the imperial garden. The eunuchs and palace maids passing by saw them all bowing respectfully. The famous white-robed army is not only attributed to Li Changqing, but also closely related to Li Xioning. Li Xioning lightly opened her tan mouth and said, Recently, the border has been repeatedly invaded by the Turks, and Tubo is also eyeing. From ancient times to the present, whenever there is a change in the central plains, these foreign tribes are eager to stir up. 
Chongqing, you guard Yuzhou to prevent the Turkic invasion. On the Tibetan side, the emperor also planned to send General Li Ji to take control. The troubles at the Tang dynasty border can be temporarily resolved Li Chongqing nodded and said, Li Ji is proficient in military strategy and is a handsome talent. With him, Tubo would not be able to make a difference. However, when I go to Yuzhou, I don't want to defend the city. I plan to lead the Dragon Cavalry Guard deep into the desert and engage in guerrilla warfare against the Turks, trying to eliminate small and medium dot sized tribes of the Turks as much as possible, in order to intimidate the Turkic royal court and prevent them from recklessly plundering the border of our Tang dynasty. In order to buy more time for the court to rest and recuperate the Turks plundered the Tang dynasty border with iron cavalry that came and went like the wind. The border defenders can only passively defend. So every time the Turkic cavalry retreats after burning, killing, and looting, the defenders can only watch helplessly without any pursuit power. And the 5,000 dragon cavalry guards in the white-robed army. Brave even more than Turkic cavalry. Encountering a small Turkic army can easily annihilate the enemy. Li Xioning frowned and said, although the Turks are a nomadic people, their major tribes are scattered. With 5,000 dragon cavalry guards, they can indeed traverse the desert. But once surrounded by them, it is almost a situation of ten deaths and no life. Li Changqin watched as a caterpillar struggled to break free from its cocoon in the flower bushes, transforming into a butterfly and flying away. He said, as a general of the heavenly strategy, I cannot watch the border people suffer from the endless invasion of the Turks. Some things always require someone to do. Just like this insect, if it doesn't break through its cocoon and become a butterfly, it can only die in its cocoon. In the face of foreign invasion, we cannot blindly defend or be weak. Only by completely defeating the Xiongnu like in the Han dynasty can we achieve a permanent solution Li Xiongning remained silent, her eyes as bright as black gemstones filled with worry. But she did not persuade Li Changqing again, because she understood Li Changqing's patriotism the most, and she also knew that Li Changqing had the ambition to defend and cure the disease. Passing by a bouquet of flowers, Li Changqing carefully picked a bright rose and inserted it into Li Xioning's hair. Sighing, I'm going to Yuzhou, but I don't know when we can meet. Li Xioning lowered her head, her pretty face slightly red, looking alluring. The roses on her head looked pale, truly more delicate than flowers. However, soon her expression changed again and she said, Father has issued a decree to appoint Chai Shao as the sun. In law. The emperor's words of gold and jade are like spilled water that cannot be retrieved. Now that the imperial edict has been issued, the marriage between Li Xioning and Chai Shao is firmly established. Even if Li Yuan regretted it, it was of no use. Li Changqing remained silent for a moment, then turned his back to Li Xioning and walked outside the palace, leaving a sentence behind. Don't worry, as long as I'm here for a day, Chai Shao won't dare to take orders. 10 Evergreen Reputation You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Right Xiaowei General Chai Shao's Mansion. The eunuch Wang Qingren, in charge of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, is reading the Imperial Edict. Under my command, the foundation of the world, I am honored with the spring decree of Haotian. The edict reads. General Chai Shao, the commander of the right brave guard, will leave the gate with few military prowess and support the weak. I have prepared for the uprising and have made repeated military achievements. I am now appointed as the Prince of Pingyang and will marry on a certain day. I am honored. When Wang Qingren read the imperial edict, everyone in the Chai mansion was beaming with joy. Only Chai Shao's father, Chai Shen, was an old man with gray hair, but his face was as gray as death, as if the sky had fallen. After the imperial edict was read out, Wang Qingren said to Chai Shao, who was in a state of ecstasy, General Chai, your majesty has asked me to instruct you to quickly discuss a good and auspicious day with the imperial censor eight to marry Princess Pingyang as soon as possible. Chai Shao took the imperial edict and said happily, thank you very much for the proposal from Duke Wang. Shao will definitely comply. 
He has admired Li Xioning for a long time and dreams of marrying her, but he never dares to mention it to Li Yuan. I never expected that happiness would come from heaven today. Happiness came so suddenly that it almost knocked him unconscious. After Wang Qingren left, just as everyone in the Chai family rushed up to congratulate Chai Xiao. Chai Shen's face was full of shock, and he trembled and said, Sik Heng, we cannot agree to this marriage. We cannot accept this imperial decree. Chai Xiao was surprised and his smile froze. He looked at his old father with a puzzled expression and asked, Father, this is a flying blessing. Princess Pingyang is not a fierce beast, and coupled with the child's admiration for her for a long time, why can't we agree to this marriage? You don't understand, you don't understand. Chai Shen's face was pale, as if frightened by immense fear, with no trace of blood on his face. He drank away the people from the Chai mansion, leaving only Chai Xiao. Dao said, Princess Pingyang and General Tians are friendly. She is Li Changqing's forbidden territory. Why did the white-robed army attack Yangzhou city thousands of miles back then, and why did Li Changqing kill Yu and Chengdu with three halberds? All 100000 Yuan soldiers were annihilated, leaving no prisoners. This is all because Yu and Chengdu spoke rudely and verbally insulted Princess Pingyang. In the Battle of Baiki Mountain, Li Mi had already planned to lead the army of Wagangzai to surrender to His Majesty, but Li Changqing refused to let him go. He rode alone, blood stained his white robe, and beheaded Li Mi among thousands of soldiers and horses. This is because Li Mi once threatened to recruit Princess Pingyang as a concubine. Today Your Majesty's decree is to say to us, from the Chai Mansion, it's not a blessing, but a disaster. Upon hearing this, Chai Xiao's eyes widened, his pupils narrowed sharply, and his face was filled with shock. But soon, his admiration for Li Xioning concealed his fear of Li Changqing. Father, my child admires Princess Pingyang and will not marry her in this life. Moreover, Your Majesty has issued a decree, and now that everything is done, we cannot make a decision. Chai Shen blew his beard and glared, shouting loudly, if I say it's not possible, it's not possible. You can marry anyone, but you can't marry Princess Pingyang. Disobeying orders and violating imperial power is a crime of beheading. Father, do you want our Chai family to be completely executed? If you resist orders, you may not die. If you offend the emperor, the general will undoubtedly die. Why don't fathers consider their children's happiness? For half a day, Chai Xiao was arguing with his father Chai Shen. When the moon rises and stars adorn the night sky, the two sides have reached a point of irreconcilable conflict. No one dares to approach the Chai mansion. With a sudden bang, Chai Shen slammed the table angrily and shouted angrily. Sik Heng, no matter what, I won't allow you to marry Princess Pingyang. If you insist on doing so, today I will draw my sword and commit suicide, splattering blood on the spot. It's better to witness the disaster of the Chai family in the future. Chai Xiao's face was full of pleading, Father, I will not marry a child who is not Princess Pingyang in this life. I hope my father succeeds. Chai Shen gave Chai Xiao a deep glance, his eyes filled with helplessness and pain. Later, he made a move that made Chai Xiao's soul spin out. He actually knelt down on both knees, straight in front of Chai Xiao. Dao said, I beg you to come with me into the palace and refuse this marriage for the sake of Chai's family and my father. Why is father so here? Chai Xiao hugged his father's shoulders with both hands, desperately trying to pull him up. In the eyes of a pair of tigers, there are tears of pain. Chai Shen sighed heavily and said, It's not because my father doesn't allow you to marry Princess Pingyang, but because this will bring disaster to our Chai family. There are hundreds of people in our Chai family, and we cannot die because of you. The glory of the Chai family cannot end because of you. Chai Xiao's face was full of anger and he said, He and Princess Pingyang are siblings. This is incest, so he is not afraid of being punished by the people of the world. 
Chai Shen sighed again and said, Your Majesty agreed to the proposal of deposing the Crown Prince and appointing you as the son. In law of Princess Pinyang precisely because of this concern. If we agree to this marriage and follow His Majesty's decree, the Chai family will surely be destroyed. Chai Shao's eyes were about to crack, his eyes were bloodshot, and he looked up angrily and shouted, Wow, ah! Li Changqing is bullying people too much. Chai Shen felt a sense of pity upon seeing his son's appearance. But Tian's mansion is grand, and Li Changqing is like the sun in the sky. For the sake of his family, he had to resist orders and sacrifice Chai Shao's happiness. After a long time, Chai Shao's anger and unwillingness in his heart finally vented a little. He was panting like a cow, his eyes bloodshot, and he almost squeezed out a few words from between his teeth. Shao, I'm willing to listen to my father's arrangements. I have wronged my son. The father and son hugged each other, feeling a deep sense of powerlessness. For generally Changqing of Tians, they are like an insurmountable high mountain, and the difference between the two is like a natural barrier. The fate of Yuan Qingdu and Li Mi has long been told to the world. Once you anger Li Changqing, no matter what your identity is, you will have no bones left in an instant. Chai Shen breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, but also felt sorry for his son. But the love between children and daughters is nothing in the face of family glory and survival. He waved his sleeve and instructed his servant, prepare your horse. I will enter the palace overnight and meet your majesty. Quickly, two handsome horses were led out, and Chai Shen and Chai Shao's father and son entered the palace overnight. Due to his fear of Li Changqing, from the moment he received the imperial edict from Li Yuan, Chai Shen's heart was pounding and his panic reached its extreme. For other ministers, this is nothing more than a beautiful thing of pie falling from the sky, but in his view, it is a hot potato. For this reason, he decided to disobey the decree. Just because of Li Changqing's past deeds, he is afraid of this. It can be seen from this that Li Changqing's reputation is so terrifying. Of course, refusing to marry would be considered refusing to marry, but Chai Shen would not be foolish enough to directly resist the decree in public, otherwise even if Li Yuan couldn't bear it, he would still be beheaded. Chai Shen's visit to the palace was to inform Li Yuan that Chai Shao had already arranged a child marriage with his family cousin and would soon be married in court. Under such circumstances, it is not suitable to be the son. In law of Princess Pingyang. It is better to demolish ten temples than to destroy one marriage. Although Li Yuan knew the reason why the Chai family dared not marry Li Xioning, he could not find any reason to refute it. You can also take advantage of the situation and withdraw the imperial edict in a legitimate manner, without compromising the emperor's authority. If it spreads, it will actually earn more praise from the people. It has to be said that although Chai Shen is a martial artist, his meticulous thinking is truly admirable. 